What is up guys? Welcome back to another GeekoWatt video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you what to do after building your brand new gaming PC. How do you go about setting the right BIOS settings? What are they? What should you change them to? How do you install Windows? Do you go for Windows 10 or the new Windows 11? And what about all those drivers that people say you need to get the optimal performance? Well, in this video, I'm going to cover off all of those in some great detail so you guys can see what to do after building your first or second or third ever gaming PC. Now, step one, you want to go ahead and pick your PC up, grab yourself a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse. Uh, get yourself set up a little something like so. Make sure all of your cables are plugged in correctly, specifically the power cable to the back of the power supply with the switch set to one and not zero. That's independent of the power button on the case. You also then want to make sure you've got a display cable coming out of your graphics card, not your motherboard's rear panel, if you've got a discrete GPU. And then of course, a keyboard and a mouse. Before booting up for the first time, I'd also recommend you go ahead and make yourself one of these. This is a bootable Windows flash drive. Basically, you need a 16 gigabyte USB 3 stick or higher if you've got 64, that would be great too. You then want to go ahead on an existing PC and download the Windows bootable media tool. For this video, I'll be focusing on Windows 11, though for Windows 10, check out the link in the description below as well. Windows 11 is very similar to Windows 10 and makes a bit more sense, I think in 2022. Run through the steps on an existing PC and that will turn a USB stick into a bootable Windows drive. Plug that into one of the USB 3 ports on the rear of the case and then we're good to go. Hit the power button on the top of your chassis and then repeatedly press the delete key on your keyboard. Doing so will instruct your motherboard to jump into the BIOS, the basic input and output settings, before we get carried away with Windows, drivers and all that good stuff. And just like that, happened perfectly, great timing. Now your BIOS will give you a rundown of all the hardware in your system. So you can see here we've got a Gigabyte B550 Aorus Pro, with a Ryzen 5 5600X and 16 gigs of RAM. It will also allow you to enable a setting called XMP. And this is the first thing we need to look for. On this gigabyte motherboard, it's on the easy mode on the main page. So we can do that like so. And then we want to select the XMP DDR4 4000 profile that comes equipped with the memory. And that will enable our XMP. For an Asus motherboard, it will be slightly different. That will try and get you a screen grab on your screen. And similarly for an MSI motherboard. You may often find as well that it makes more sense to go into advanced mode, which we can do by hitting F2 on our motherboard, otherwise F7 on some boards too. And our XMP settings are in the tweaker or the overclocking profile here. Once you've done that, you also want to navigate over to boot. We need to make sure that our boot option is set to the partition on the USB drive we just plugged in. So here it's called SMI USB disk 1100 partition one. For the avoidance of any doubt, now is a good time to remove any other USB drives you might have installed or any drives that already contain Windows. That way you'll know which is the correct USB drive. Set this as boot option one. Boot option two, I've just picked the same SSD but a different partition because I've only got Windows on there anyway. And that's basically it. We can hit F10 to save and exit and our PC should automatically reboot into the Windows 11 installation environment. And there we are, into the Windows environment. Now there's a few ways to tell this is Windows 11, mainly because the squares are completely like sort of face on, they're not at an angle, uh, so that's the difference. But otherwise the setup looks basically the same. Select all of your region settings, of course for me it's England, UK, or uh, English United Kingdom, sorry, and then click install now. Enter your product key at this stage if you have one, but if you don't, don't worry, just click I don't have a product key and we can log in with our Windows login later. Select Windows 11 Home, or of course Pro if you're installing like 64 gigs of RAM or something like that. We're then able to pick which of our drives we want to install Windows on. So in this system, we've got a one terabyte SSD at the bottom, 931 gig, and a four terabyte hard drive. So we want the faster SSD. Hit next. And then it's gonna run through the Windows installation process. This is virtually identical to with Windows 10. Whether that changes or not is yet to be seen. This could take a few moments though. So I'll rejoin you once it's jumped through each of these steps. It's then simply gonna go through and ask us what country we're from, what keyboard layouts we want to add and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, click yes, no, yes, no, and select all of the right options. We don't need a second keyboard layout. I really do like actually the different installation kind of visuals of Windows 11 over Windows 10. That's really nice. Lots of blurring is going to have to happen here. 
as we add our Wi-Fi network and finalize at the last few details. Looking good, once we're into the Windows 11 environment, there's a few applications we need to install. These are primarily based around the drivers of the system. Adding drivers in can make a huge difference to performance, so it's always best practice to do this now. What you want to do is you want to head over to your browser of choice. I'm just going to use Edge because it's what's pre-installed uh, on Windows 11. Not a great browser, but it will do the job for what we're looking to do. In order to find the drivers for your system, find the name of your motherboard, in our case the Aorus B550 Pro, and then put the word drivers at the end. Navigate to your official product page from the manufacturer, don't go via any third parties, it's just asking uh, to be a virus or a bug or some bloatware for some description, and then head over to the support tab. Once you go to support, you can select your operating system. Remember of course we're on Windows 11, so we need to select Windows 11 64 bit, and then you'll get a list of potential drivers. You don't need to install all of these, but I'd recommend installing the Realtek HD audio driver. So let's hit download on that one. I would also recommend picking up your AMD chipset drivers. So that's this top one just here. If you've got an APU, you also want to install the APU driver. We've got, of course, a dedicated graphics card, so no need in our instance. I don't need any SATA or RAID drivers. We're not looking to put loads of hard drives or three and a half, two and a half inch SSDs. So we don't need those. And BIOS also, we're not really going to require. That's for updating the BIOS on your motherboard, as opposed to actually installing any related drivers. Head over to utility, and then you also want to download any specific utilities you think are relevant. A good example on this motherboard, you've got some RGB functionality. So Gigabyte App Center will allow you to configure that RGB, to tweak it, to change it around. So it's definitely worth in our instance downloading that one. Because we've got uh, an NVIDIA graphics card as well, we want to head over to GeForce Experience. Now GeForce Experience is NVIDIA's official sort of driver's utilities application. And we can go ahead and download that from once again, the official NVIDIA website. Make sure you're not going through any third parties. There's absolutely no need. We then want to run through each of these drivers one by one, installing and restarting after each. It may automatically restart, but it's best practice to do so once again. Make sure you do all of this before installing game launchers and all that stuff, because once you've got these downloaded, games will start to automatically detect uh, what graphics card, what other hardware you've got installed. AMD actually have a really cool tool as well. If you've got a system with an AMD CPU or GPU, where it will automatically detect the hardware of your PC and install the right drivers for you. Links for all of these will be down in the description as well, alongside, as I mentioned earlier, a video relevant to Windows 10 as opposed to Windows 11. And once you've done that, we've done our final restart, we're pretty much good to go. You're able to load up your favorite games and you should be getting those optimal performance figures. A couple of final recommendations. If you want to check your frame rates looking good, download MSI Afterburner's Reva Tuner or NVIDIA FrameView to monitor frame rates. MSI Afterburner is a great option too to monitor GPU temperatures and overclock your graphics card. And Hardware Monitor Pro, specifically the Pro version, which is still free from my experience, is great for monitoring CPU temperatures to make sure your all-important processor isn't overheating, thermal throttling, or on the brink of exploding. Just kidding, it's not actually going to explode. With that though, that pretty much wraps it up for this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a big old like rating, make sure to get subscribed. Thanks for tuning in, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.